zero minus one, and we are on air. Hello, today is May thirty uh, first. Welcome everybody. Um, hey Dan, hey Gabriel, hey Hayan, hey Jaguar, hey Caitlin, Mikey, Sephira, Sabrina, and Curly. Welcome Good morning. Everybody. Yes. And Good we morning, have, everybody. Uh, one viewer. Good morning. Uh, I have a. I, I watched our previous webinars and I saw that I speak too fast, so I have to speak slower. If I'm too slow, please adjust me, help me to adjust. So I have a list of things to announce, and these are important, but I will start with the usual. So if, you, if they are new to us, uh, go to humancolony.org and you uh, join us, and then you will ha uh, receive email announcements for new webinars. That's how we do that now, and it seems to be working well. Email come right in the time, pretty, pretty quick. Uh, Jim is offering private sessions, uh, channeling sessions, and he charges uh, 40 mm -hmm. per half an hour of pure channeling, and your email is jimreiki at gmail.com, is it right? Jim Ray. Right. And uh, the phone number giveaway? 585-414-6816. And the Skype? James.Charles211. All small letters. Actually, on Skype it doesn't matter which letters they are. No. But all right. Okay. So uh, I started doing private live counseling sessions. I uh, And I did three, and I feel it make me feel, they make me feel accomplished. Uh, finally, I'm, I'm really useful. Uh, and what comes up is light workers have trouble adjusting to 3D, so I don't have to explain how things are there. I have to explain how things are here. So I'm, ex I'm kind of speaking light worker language, but explain to extraterrestrial souls how to adjust to, to this reality. That's this is what most requested. Uh, so I'm inviting more of those sessions and charge introductory rate of $30 per hour, and actually we go usually more than an hour, lot, lots more than an hour. So I'm open. Um, Nick and Zakari also offer private sessions. You can find their contacts uh, on, um, they have pages on the humancolony.org. And we are a community of light workers focused on bringing the first contact closer, preparing for it, um, speaking to humans in the space, in the colonies, uh, helping the humanity to ascend. And our community is growing, and we have now wonderful webinars where anyone can join if they're lucky to get in. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nick <laughs> did first paid webinar yesterday, and thanks to Nick, he's a star. He made it happen. Uh, it was $5 per donation per place, and actually it was half full to seven places most of the time, so it works well for him. And part of that goes to Human Colony. We are starting now a non-profit organization. We will register it. And we got some help from experienced business people, light worker, experienced light worker who has experience in business. And we're now thinking how to structure it. And I have a few ideas. One idea is that we have no clue what to do. We have all this classical business, which we know it doesn't work. We know the business is growing until it's rotten and it rotten, rotten from the head. So that's number one. So uh, we need to reinvent, reinvent their community. There are good communities, monasteries, which can copy themselves and populate new areas. There are franchises, there are kibbutzes, which are almost close to ideal commune where everybody is good to everybody. And there are nice corporations and nice other organizations, so we can learn from those. And when I speak to our high friends, already two times I had an experience where they considered me to be a representative of the earth. And I have goosebumps from that. And it, it didn't surprise me, actually. I had that experience. I don't know if I will be representing the Earth or you will be representing of someone else, but just thinking about that. Jim, can you represent the Earth? It would be difficult, but I don't know. Not unthinkable. 
And not unthinkable. No. Not unthinkable. So having experience representing even thinking about that. So I, I have that experience already, and I want to share that experience with you. So when we start that organization nonprofit, uh, Human Colony or Hucola, uh, we'll have a committee, and then we'll have another committee and subcommittees, you know, sp for specific projects. And you will be part of the committee which is then to represent the Earth to extraterrestrials. And so we will rotate the ideas of rotating people, and everyone would have a chance to. Now you already have a chance to speak to extraterrestrials, and you already represent in the Earth. But now the idea is that you might be elected to represent, and that is experience by itself is very valuable. So make you know just thinking about that. Like, uh, already we have uh, hosts of this show. I'm doing a TV show right now. It's a homemade TV show, and I'm hosting it. And when I'm not there with Nick, I thank you very much. Brian and Caitlin did hosting, and they had that experience of being a host of TV show. How many of you were dreaming about being TV show hosts? I was, always, yeah. I was. Um, me, yeah. Yeah, so I thank was. you. Superior. Thank you for all, all of the, all of those who hosted, and uh, I'm inviting more hosts. Mm -hmm. uh, I will deviate a little bit. I need to speak about that as well. Um, we got one person unsubscribed, so somebody didn't like what we do, and we were banned from one of the light worker sites where we were really welcome initially, and now we are banned. I don't banned. I don't know why. Uh, actually, I do know why, but. Uh, Still, there are uh, more details to find out. But what I'm saying is the message for you, uh, you know, first, we have to get used to that. If you go somewhere, now I'm worried. If somebody unfriended me, I'm already worried. If somebody commented negatively, I'm already worried. So, so I have to get used to that and get over that. And we all have to get used to that. You can't really be allowed by everybody. If you, you go on the spot, you have to be like tougher and just accept it as it is. Uh, but also, when we do these webinars and when you're hosting the webinar or when you're a participant, uh, try to stay in high vibration. Obviously, we oscillate between high and low, high and low. And Nix goes really low sometimes. <laughs> like it's kind of almost negative vibration. But uh, you know, bringing it up and whatever we discuss, you know, cooking, cats. Make it spiritual. Make it move that movement from anywhere low up. So that movement, we do it all the time. So that's my request. Um, and we have been watched uh, from many angles, and uh, we get hundreds of views. So and Nick is part of that. So thanks, Nick, for making it happen. And his uh, webinars, hangouts are popular, and we get a new member signing up, and we get lots more views. And now. Uh, we've been paid webinars are reality. So elections, um, we'll keep it simple. We'll do maybe elections from. Uh, I propose to do it on the website. So members of the website will elect some sort of organizing committee, and we'll do elections frequently. So we'll we'll have the chance to expand and rearrange things. Now, am I afraid that I will be uh, misplaced from leadership? Yes, I am, but uh, I would take it. I think if that thing is successful, I will find um, my usefulness anywhere. I, I, I'm, I'm glad to be leading that thing, but uh, I guess whatever happens, I uh, whatever it serves to everybody, uh, I will have to accept. And uh, if I'm a present, representing the Earth, I, I know my my uh, what's that word? Good feature. There is a word for that. Intention. Good features, quality. I know my, my good Skills. properties. That is a nice word for that. But but I know my good properties. <laughs> my my uh, my nurtures, virtues, 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 virtues. I know my virtues, but I know my. I don't have experience in uh, leadership of big uh, big uh, big bigger things. So 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 I can contribute, but you know obviously there are more experienced politicians and 
workers, community workers or more experienced. So, and uh, when I think about somebody, I always take my uh, put myself in their place. When I speak to extraterrestrials, I look try to look from air, uh, their eyes. When I think about Jesus, I'm thinking, what would I do if I was in his place or in Judas' place, and what I would do if I was a creator? So. I will. I welcome this. I invite you to think of that sort. Could what would you do if you represented the Earth? And there is lots of ideas. But but today's ideas. How about we do social engineering right here and create an ideal community? And an ideal community. How do we prevent it from rotting? And that's my point number three. How about we invite extraterrestrials to be members of our committees? Every committee would have at least one extraterrestrial as a member. And we might have an advisory board of uh, our extraterrestrial friends. Okay. That gives you another interesting perspective. Would you like to be a member of a committee where extraterrestrials are part of it? Mm -hmm. Of course. For sure. I would, yeah. Yes, I mean that's. I think that is the future of the Earth. If we want a new style of life, we probably need to learn from other hum human societies away from Earth and <laughs> and bring higher guidance. Basically, it was like that in some religious communities we, where they had prophets. I mean, prophets are channelers. I mean, prophet is equal to channeler. There is no it's the same thing, no difference whatsoever. So we need a community which is run by prophets mm -hmm. or is advised by prophets. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. And uh, that's about it. We have more people who want to participate. So when you're done with your questions, step out and watch from uh, from the other from that other screen. Which is on humancolon.org, Jim's Jim's um, webinar, and I really, if if you step away from the computer, please exit because there are, I find that there are some icons. People already muted themselves, went away, and you're just taking place. So don't don't uh, don't take place there. So we have ten places, but if it is nine, you didn't have to, to leave. We really want to have at least nine people uh, with us. Matt, uh, who we answer yes. your question? Yes, Max. Do you, yeah. do you have YouTube video that isn't on uh, Hukolo? What do you mean? Do you do you personally have a YouTube video which is not on Hukolo? Oh, you mean channel. When you sort of say video, you mean channel. Yes, yeah. Max Steinberg has a channel. Yeah. Tons of videos, yes. Who does? Tons, like mm, six videos. You, Some of them are very good. No, which are not on Hukolo. Did you do a recent video which is not on Hukolo? Did I do a recent video? No, no recent ones. Oh, okay. Initially, I had the channel Mike Steinberg, and then I started Hukola channel. That's it. Oh, okay. Somebody mentioned you said something on a video, and I don't know which one. But anyway, it's okay. All right. I'll ask so you later. Who, we do, who do we want to invite? So, telepathy is the key today. We want our, our community to become telepathic. We have great new things happen. We have five channelers who are with us. Uh, Sabrina started channeling. Uh, Jaguar. Jaguar, Nick, Zachariah, and, and Gabriel, oh. and Jim. So would it be more? That's six. Oh, so we already lost the lost the count of how many. And Curly just started speaking Arcturian, and a couple more people started speaking languages, or even more I people. I think started. so. <laughs> yeah. It was Arcturian, yes. <clears throat> oh, yeah, we I can relate that. I uh, channeled. I channeled two other entities. Well, one, it's not an entity, it's a group. Ooh. Cool. Yeah. Very like good. Group. Well, what group was it, do you know? Creators. The creators? Yeah. Uh, that is not unexpected. You are uh, already connected to Arcturians, and now you are uh, with creators. That is wonderful. That's good. Yeah, and the other entity never incarnates. Okay. That's okay for them. I mean, yeah, many, many many more entities don't incarnate than those yeah. that do. Right. Yeah, this this one said it lives between the realms. Oh, oh, is that um, an angel? Hmm? Is it an angelic being? 
I I have no idea. I don't think so because um, it basically lives off of it. I guess it travels to different universes. That's how big it is. It says there aren't that many of them. Right. Not that many of them. Okay. Okay. Um, and it is, and it basically absorbs the information. But it doesn't influence one way or the other. So okay. it's merely an observant. Okay. Observer, yes. yes. Uh, well, that is excellent. Uh, I guess uh, do more channelings with us. Uh, who, who was hosting the channel? Who was asking questions? Nobody. It just started speaking. Uh, to, uh, did you record it? How did they know? Yeah, I recorded it. Oh, oh so right. you spoke to a recorder. Were yes. you listening while while was speaking, or how did you participate? Did you were you away? I because I would ask questions in my head. Oh okay. Oh, and so then, you were the, a host and the answering the same thing. Yes. Yes. It's kind of lucky. I'm not a lot. I I can't do that. You need to learn that. I need to learn how to ask questions while I'm under because I haven't been able to do that. Yeah, and then later on I was gardening. And I was with a friend, and you know, he said, "Why didn't you let me know?" And I would have helped. And he started asking me what they said, and then I said it. And then next thing I know, I'm channeling. Uh huh. And the entity was talking to him. <laughs> so. Oh I wow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I I need to leave today soon. Uh, Around 12:15. So, if there is a chance for you to channel after Jim, we will try to do that. But I cannot. cannot yeah, I have to leave also, unfortunately. All right, so we'll do that other time. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll get together. Yeah. Yeah, that that's very nice. Like, that is very exciting. Cool. Very cool. I'd, uh, I'd like Max? to share. Yes. Yeah, yeah I'd like to share, uh, Sabrina, that I have the exact same experience of uh, being in a channeling state. And being both parties asking questions and then getting the answers. So I ask questions mentally, and then uh, the voice uh, channels the answers. So yeah, you're not alone on that. Oh, good, that good. When I channel when I'm a, when I'm half asleep, I can ask. When no one's around, I can ask questions. Then when I'm in a dream state, almost. That's very cool. Oh. So we want to invite today uh, humans from the colonies to speak to us. I, we, we had experience before speaking to them. So we would like to establish a line of communication with them and speak to them much more often. Last time when I invited humans to come through, uh, it was misunderstood by the spirits and they thought that I'm inviting human discarnate spirits, the ones that died, physically died. And it's not those. We are not inviting discarnate human spirits. We're inviting third dimensional and four dimensional humans who are, who are living now in physical bodies uh, and primarily for the ones from the colonies. Um, we also would like to invite Jesus. Apparently it would be a nice time for him to come through again uh, and our usual friends as well. And I, here I will uh, pause. Uh, everybody please mute yourself and let Jim channel now. Mike, I will mute you. You can unmute yourself when you Oh, thank you. Okay. I'll do a little meditation. Everybody think some positive things and warmth and love for each other. I'm so glad to see that you're. there's a lot of friends out there. That's great. I love that.
Ah, good morning. Good morning. I am Buddha. Welcome, Buddha. I've come to talk to you today about the third chakra. Thank you. The solar plexus, as you call it. We call it the yellow sun when I was a child. The sun chakra, because it was yellow. Yes. It, it is a chakra that is very interesting and something that I could learn at a young age. It was about destiny and planning and about who you are and who you want to be. And it is connected to the other two that I have already spoken to you about, the root chakra and the sacral, as you call it. Remember now, I'm going to give you a little re testing. The root chakra, that is the one that connects you to the Mother Earth. That is the one that grounds you the most, but not only grounds you. The other two chakras above it ground you as well, because they are the lower earthly chakras. The heart is in center, and the three upper ones are the chakras of the universe and the sky and enlightenment. However, Remember that the grounding of yourself is important to be able to reach out of the third dimension. Those who live in the fourth dimension and do not ground themselves to the third cannot communicate with those in the third. They will not understand you. Do you understand? Yes. So therefore, let's move up to the sun chakra, which I call the sun chakra. You call it the solar plexus. Remember that the orange second chakra is the creative chakra. And think about that for a moment. I, let me enlighten you with something. The creator, as it is, this chakra makes you a creator. The sexual chakra brings creation to your world, does it not? Think about that, that your God, when he was in the creative mode, was working from his second chakra. Remember that? Wow. So he has much more enlightenment above him. Do you understand? So now let's go to the yellow chakra. And it shows you who you are in this life. It connects to the other two so well because creation, Mother Earth, Mother Earth, creation, and then identity. Do you see that? Identity, who you are on this earth, your perfect self coming up from Mother Earth, rising to the third level. Do you understand? Yes. And this means that you can help yourself by connecting all these three together so that whenever you are not grounded, you may go to the solar plexus because it is co-connected with all these below. And then you can reach the sacral. And then you can reach the root. When I was young, a boy, just, and they were teaching me about the solar plexus and the sun. Why they called it the sun was because it, it brightens the lower chakras. It brightens the lower chakras because this is what happens. Yes, you have your creative your connection to the earth, you have your sexuality, and then you have meaning for it all, right here. Of course, meaning is everywhere, but this is the beginning of where the meaning starts for you when you're coming up through the chakras. Here is your meaning and understanding. I know some may disagree, but think about this is the meaning where you plan to move forward, where you plan to move up to the heart chakra, your throat chakra, the third eye, 
and the crown. So this is your jumping board, your trampoline, as they call it, to the next chakra, which is the heart. The heart is the center, th three, four down and four up, or three down and three up, if you want. It's the center. And it's where everything comes together. So when you see the, the chakras moving up toward the heart, you also feel it coming down to the heart. It is the center. And therefore, this chakra is to be put in emphasis of getting to the heart. And how do you do that? Your intention for this chakra, when you find yourself looking for directions in your life, looking for places to go and jobs, what you call jobs, you must connect it higher. You see how it moves up? Yes. Connect your job search to the heart. Yes. Uh -huh. Your highest intention, as some might say, your highest excitement, as some might say, I have heard that said by many. But here is where it all comes together for the lower chakras, you see. These are the lower chakras, and they come together here. Yes. And then they move up. So when you are planning your life, when you are looking forward to your highest excitement, this is where your sun is because it will brighten your life to move into a place of high excitement. Does this make sense to you? Yes, yes, perfect sense. And then when you move up to the heart, you could speak for a hundred years about what the heart does because it is the connection of all things. It is the beginning of telepathy. It is the beginning of upward movement in your, not only in your spirit, but in your flesh and in your emotions as well. You see, you have been already explained that the heart is the beginning of telepathy, which we will get to in another time. But solar plexus, the heart and the solar plexus are connected with that first. First, you are connected with the heart and the solar plexus when you're thinking of telepathy. Why? Because the sun in here has a lot to do with intention. What you intend to do with your life. What you intend to do with your highest excitement. What you intend to bring to those around you and the world. Do you understand? Because then these two are connected with telepathy because you will know how someone else is feeling or what they intend to do before you even speak to them because these two are connected and then when you move up in your vibration you will connect to the third eye and then these will be all that you need to connect for telepathy to be full. But then, when you actually come to someone with telepathy, your telepathy, all chakras will be right there with them. Do you understand? All the chakras will be brought into light with telepathy. And with intimacy, all chakras will be connected to those that you love or intimate lovers. Do you understand? Yes. In friendship? Friendship they connect in one way. For lovers it connects in another. But I was not understanding of that when I was a child. I'm, I'm starting to tell you about the heart as well because there's so much to tell about the heart. The next time I come to tell about the heart chakra, you will already have some information about it, which you already, most of you I can tell, 
already understand many things about the chakras. Many things. And remember, all your chakras have a shadow behind them of all the past lives you have lived and all the different occupations are there within that heart chakra. I mean the, I'm sorry, the sun chakra for me. And in all the chakras there are past lives that are shadowed behind them. You bring them along and that is why you have deja vu. That is why you have thoughts that are important from other past lives. That is why other past lives affect you. Is because your chakras all have memories of the, all the past lives. So therefore, they can be brought back into understanding. I'm sorry if I'm not being clear. It is hard to put into words what I'm trying to say. But know this, that you can learn from your past because there are lives that you were not happy. There were lives when you were not fulfilled. And these were occupations that were not of the highest light. However, you had to learn those. Why? To understand what the highest vibration is. You have to learn the other vibrations to appreciate the greater vibration. That I was not aware of as a child. But when I did my regressions with my, with my priests, as you might call them, monks, as you might call them, they were able to guide me into a way that I understood who I was and how I got to be who I am. This was important for the way I lived my life as a teacher. I will leave you now, but if there is anyone that has a question... Um, I do. Yes. You know, there are many children who are abused. Yes. Uh, either by their parents or not by their parents and also sexually abused. Um, do the chakras ever get damaged to the point where it's almost impossible to repair them? And if so, um, how can a chakra be repaired if it can be damaged? There are ways to repair the chakras. But first, the person must be willing. That is the first thing. If they are willing for their chakras to be healed, healing a chakra is not that difficult. However, the emotions, the body, the spirit have all been affected by mm -hmm. damage chakra. Yes. But there are ways, if they come to you, or if you come to them, and they are willing to give you permission to heal their chakras, it can be done. We will have a session on that sometime. Okay. And one more question, Buddha. When people are sexually intimate, their chakras unite, correct? With telepathy, yes. Oh, so like if somebody has a lot of sexual partners, I understood that their energies are constantly connecting and disconnecting and connecting and disconnecting, and this can be damaging eventually. Do you see it that way? In telepathy, yes. There would be a damage done if the chakras were used that way too often and mm -hmm. with numerous partners it mm -hmm. could happen they can be healed they can be restored however partners are very special people supposedly if and if you attach your mind to a partner there is an oath there with them. Do you understand? If it is a, a very close relationship, but there are those who have many partners that they do not share their chakras with at all. 
they only share their physicality. That is it. That can be damaging as well in some ways with diseases mm -hmm. and things of that nature, but mm -hmm. it is not a chakra connection. Okay. Thank you. Can I also ask a question? Yes. Is appropriate? Uh, ascension? Yes. Or would it be the key of the ascension would be shifting from third to the fourth chakra? With dimensions? From the third chakra, from solar plexus to heart chakra. Is it the essence of ascension? The e no, I, it is not. The essence of ascension is... The essence of ascension that I believe you're speaking of is to bring the world population... You're talking about personal ascension, correct? Mm, both personal and collective. Ah, they're, they are two different things. Ascension of the group is when the group connects as a community and rises together. The ascension of an individual can be separate or with the connection because, let me tell you why, You're, you are with the others in your emotional, in your spiritual growth, in your spiritual output, but you are not connected by the words and by the by the thoughts of those until you become connected with the ascension that way then you're doing it on your own but you're rising yes if you rise from the sun to the heart that is an ascension of sorts because your vibration must have come up do you understand yes and then you can connect that ascension with the world ascension, which is something the same but separate. Do you understand? Yes, yes. So, yes, in the sense that you are moving in a higher dimension. It is not a fourth dimension, though. It it's is not. just No, it is a, just an ascension to that vibration. The ascension to fourth dimension comes from the third eye in the crown. So, but yes, it is an ascension of sorts that does not include fourth dimensional energy, but it is third, you, you see, you must be totally third dimensional before you can reach the fourth dimension, and under, uh, well, that's not so either. You can reach the fourth dimensional, but to be third dimensional fully and then reach the fourth dimension is much more enlightening in the sense that you will be able to communicate the fourth dimensional information to those in the third dimension. Without the third dimensional completion, wholeness, this cannot be communicated properly. Mm -hmm. It can be communicated, but it's in bits and pieces, and people will not understand. It's like your Bible. It is all bits and pieces of knowledge and information and times and pasts, but it needs to be connected together to make sense in some ways. Do you understand? Yes. But, yes, moving from the sun to the heart is a rise in vibration, but not in fourth dimension. I see. And the veil of forgetfulness, veil from separating the third and fourth dimension. Yes. Would it be the veil between heart and solar plexus or elsewhere? Elsewhere. Your heart, you can veil your heart, yes, but you will not rise above that veil. You, when you unveil your heart and move, continue to move up, there can be a veil at the crown. There can be a veil at any chakra level. And that is because you do not know how to get to the next chakra level. Do you understand? Yes. When, but when you get to the third eye, and if there is a veil on the third eye, this is a problem because you will never get to the fourth dimension without the third eye opening. Ah. Or being at least partially open. Ah. So... Pray intentionally 
as someone said about intentional meditation, oh, someday we will talk about meditation. So many of you do it wrong. But the third dimensional meditation with intention can open up the full third eye and bring forth dimensional energy in. But um, what is surprising to me now? I must change the subject. Of course, please do. What is, an, what is very interesting to this generation is that your fourth dimensional energy is awakening as fourth dimensional energy is being released as of 12, 21, 12, your eyes are opening. They cannot help but open because you have within you fourth dimensional energy. So that veil, if your eyes are opening, that veil cannot be there. So you know, those of you who know and felt the fourth dimensional energy are speaking in other languages, are starting to talk to aliens through your system. You have awakened this fourth dimensional energy within you. And it has become part of you. So therefore, ground yourself completely so that you can make the most of this fourth dimensional energy. Because that is the only way that it will be most effective. Of course it can be effective without total grounding, but you have to understand connection to Earth and fourth dimension brings it all together. You see, we are just aligned to the universe, to the light, to the Creator, and without connecting all the points from Earth to sky, you cannot understand fully the messages that come. Does that make sense to you? Yes, yes, perfect. Uh, thank you. Hi, Buddha. Yes. Just one small thing. Yes. Uh, what about the, the chakra points in the planet? Can they be damaged? Is, is something damaged? In the what? In the planet. Ah, the chakras of the planet. You may heal those as well as a group. You see, as your vibration moves up, you affect the Earth's vibration as well. However, there are still very, very many that have low vibration and very, very many that feel that the Earth is just to be used and not to be respected. You have a good point, though. The heart of the Earth is in a certain place. I believe you call it Actually, the Earth has two heart chakras because they're on the other side of each other. Why is this? It's because it is necessary for Mother Earth to be dualistic. Does this make sense? Yes, yes, perfect sense, yes. So she has two hearts. The one heart, the first heart, the perfect heart, where if you take your intentions and go there, they will be amplified would be a place called Hawaii you call it it is called Hawaii yes and it is a heart chakra very very right there in oh I cannot say the name but it is right there Did I answer your question? You can help heal the earth by giving it energy, offer it energy, offer it anything that about you that you do not like and ask it to change that energy and recycle it and make it into good energy for her healing. Anytime you offer Mother Earth energy, put your hands down so that the energy can come out of your hands to the earth and tell her that you are giving her an offering from yourself 
or from the universe. And you can help heal the earth that way. But, but, uh, Other ways to heal the earth are to be respectful to her. Buddha, is it the island Kauai in Hawaii that is the heart? It could be. I cannot pronounce it. I see perhaps, I see Hawaii. There is a spot, perhaps it is Kauai, is that what you said? Ko? Yes. Ye because what I understand is that islands were interesting to eat the beings. Ah. Oh. Well, that would be the place then. Yes, and I'm traveling f from fourth to third right now to ground yeah. myself. That is a hard journey. From fourth to third dimension is a hard journey when you start in fourth and do not know third at all, or or do not know third is truth. You know of its vision and what it, you feel it should be. But what it should be is not what you feel in the third dimension. I mean fourth dimension. You have to be in the third dimension to actually feel the third dimension. And to understand it. It's more physical. It's more dense. It's more lower vibration in the sense that it is connecting to the earth of mother but it must be that way i do not i do not how to ex expound on the fact that the lower vibrations are necessary to understand the higher vibrations does this make sense to you all am i speaking in an understandable way. Yes. Yes. Very much. Yes. Very, very, much. Yes. very good. Buddha. Is there any more questions? Yes, I have a question. Yes. But first, I would like to ask you if you wish to leave or to stay a little longer, for I am aware you are were wishing to leave. Ah. It is not that I am wishing to leave. It is that I have so much time to some, tell you what I have to say, and then I am called away. Yes. But if you have a question, please ask. Yes. And I will I stay understand. as long as I can. Yes, I understand. Thank you for the opportunity. I was just trying to make sure it was appropriate. To Thank you for your, your presence. Compassion. Yes, thank you for your presence. You spoke to the nature of the solar plexus. Yes. You spoke specifically about the shadow aspect and the conditioning forces both in past lives and also in current life. Correct. My question is or what I would like to have you share is on the topic of practices to deepen our awareness and release conditioning from our solar plexus. Is uh, that understandable? Yes, you want to be more aware yes. of who you are and why you're here and how to release it if you do not know. Is that correct? Yes, in part, but also the patterns, the conditioning that we bring both from past lives and especially from this life, which yeah. somehow brings resistance and less than optimal function of the solar plexus. Yes, I understand. I did not explain that even in your highest excitement that does not always happen and why does that not always happen the conditions around you are sometimes not favorable for your highest excitement to happen you can have it you can 
continue to work toward it and bring it into the heart. But sometimes the things around you bring you down. The thing is, you must find a way to push out the negative. A good practice for this is to welcome everyone, negative or positive. Welcome every action, negative or positive, and then agree that you will remain positive. Does that make sense to you at all? Yes, it is quite profound. You must agree to remain in your positive state because this is the what you call the law of attraction and it works for your highest and greatest excitement as well as for your entire being. Does that make sense? Yes. You must choose that even though they're, the negative is pushing on you, pulling on you, or pushing you and hurting you, you must remain positive because, you know, that is not going to last. That is only a portion of your experience, only a portion of your life. And then, once you remain in the positive state, which is difficult, I'm not saying that it is easy. And sometimes it has to let go and you have to have a, it has to fall. But bring it back up. Remember all the positive things that have happened to you. All the wonderful, loving things that will bring you back to that state where you should be to be still moving forward. Do not accept the negative as reality. Your reality is in the positive, not in the negative. Does this make sense to you? Yes. Yes. I have is a there small... another part of the question I did not answer? I believe there is. Yes, I have a small detail I would like to clarify if that is appropriate. That is fine. You I may speak the English better than me. <laughs> yes. Um, my understanding is that the solar plexus is the center of emotion. Is that correct? Emotion, did you say? Yes, emotion. Emotion is centered there into a point, but you must understand that all the all the chakras have their center of emotion. Even wow. the do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. That is a huge center of emotion, but the heart has a center of emotion. The the communication has a center of emotion. They all have their centers. That one might be brighter in the sense that it is your highest excitement. Do you understand? And that's yes. what excitement is emotion. But each chakra unto itself can contain, has to contain, a center of emotion. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Yes. For you to be a full being, to be a full third dimension, each part of you, each chakra, even the smaller chakras, have an attachment to emotion. Otherwise you would not be able to get sick because of a negative emotion. Do you understand what I mean? Yes. If a negative emotion comes into one of your chakras and it manifests into the body, that is emotional. Yes. It's emotional illness. Does that make sense to you? Yes. I believe I have that experience in my body right now. Yes. So you understand that, yes, perhaps the sun chakra has more emotions to deal with, perhaps, 
but each chakra has its own center of emotions. Yes, that's precisely what I was trying to refer to before. Ah, then you are Star correct. The stored emotions in the solar plexus but from there... this life and former lives are a big uh, challenge to deal with during this life. That's what I was trying to understand further and ask practices to deal with about. Yes. Your practices are... It is difficult to, to have a practice for positivity. Is it not? When the world is so negative around you, I was fortunate. I was very fortunate that those around me had much higher values than what I see around your earth today. There are those of you that have very high values and very high uh, vibrations compared to those of the past. But it is hard to stay positive in a world like this. But your what I was telling you about your practices, intention your meditations, become better meditators, research, research meditation, because some of you cannot achieve it even, and it is necessary to ward off the evil that could come to you. It is necessary to ward off the word evil is not correct, but it is a strong word. Do you understand? Yes, the lower frequencies. The lower frequencies, yes. So learn to meditate and intention your meditations. This is very important in this time, in this day and age. Thank Meditation you. is very important. Research it. Learn how to do it properly. And learn how to make it part of your daily routine because it will help you to grow. It will help you to be more enlightened. Because the spirit of meditation and intention will be with you. And they will understand what direction you are moving and why you are moving there. I say also, speak it. In this day and age, you have to speak it. There is too much going on in the minds of today's people. I come from a simpler time. Speaking it was not necessary. Your higher self and spirit guides could hear every thought because they were very plain and we had a simple life. We weren't concerned about many, many things. As today, there are many, many thoughts many densities in the mind, worries, difficulties, and the spirit guides can sometimes understand where you're going, but other times there's too much going on there. Speak it. If you want it to be heard, speak it. I've told others in other parts of the world the same thing. And your alien friends have told you similar things as well. Yes. But in this day and age, things are different. And things must be clear. And things must be understood clearly. Does this make sense to you? Yes, very much so. So Thank I would like you to learn proper meditation. Some of you know it. Some, some of you meditate in a very good and real way but you must learn to meditate in a way that brings you up centers you grounds you and presents opportunity to you even yes meditation can do that Buddha I have a question about meditation yes. because when if I may Jaguar um, ask this question Yes. Jack, is that okay? Thank you. Jaguar, are you okay with her asking a question? Yes, and it's perfect because I would like also to further the understanding of specific techniques you would like to suggest on that, on how to deepen our practice to release emotions and further that process. 
you are very wise. Um, I would just like to ask you, whenever I try to meditate, I'm out. I, I go, I just, it's not even to sleep, it's sort of like passing out. So I'm wondering if there's something blocking my, um, I, either I'm going into my subconscious in that moment and I'm not aware of it, or there's something blocking me going into in there. No, you are fine. No, I think a lot of people do that. Let me explain something to you. There is not just one kind of meditation. The kind of meditation you do is very helpful for you. It gives you rest and understanding and brings you into balance and sharpens your chakras. There are other kinds of meditation that make awareness greater, that make intention greater, that make all these other things slightly better. Now, you must learn more than one kind of meditation. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. You may not have to use that kind of meditation every day. You may find that one kind of meditation works best for you daily and then other kinds of meditation work for specific things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I could talk about that for a great amount of time because there are... Th do you all understand that there's different kinds of meditations? Yes, it was very helpful to find it out, yes. There are many kinds of meditations and you should seek out the ones that resonate with you and then use them to, to bring up your vibration and to find your highest excitement if you don't know what it is or to achieve your highest excitement if you do know what it is. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Buddha. You're welcome. <coughs> All right. Can I may ask a question? Uh, be very quick. Oh, it's it's all right. I, I I want to always look at safety first, and if you feel it's it's. Um... I'm not in any danger. Okay. Um, do you know of the Council of Creators? I know of them. Yes. I am not one of them. Do you know of our unique creator for our uh, system and his unique, uh, his love of variety? Yes. <laughs> what is your question? Do you, do you, um, Gordon? Do they, does it, Gordon, correct. Namaste and blessings for being here. Thank you so much. Um, do you feel that the current council's uh, creators, I'm trying to remember exactly if they, if they like giving advice or exactly giving guidance, how they word it, um, do they have any thoughts on our current status or any advice from the creators um, on what we can be doing uh, better or any insights yeah. at all? Their insight is that you're all too selfish. You have too small of a world. Your world is a few people and not the entire world. But now that you are becoming enlightened, your world is the entire world. Your family is the entire population. They would like you to see you connect to the world and give to the world as you would give to those that you love dearly. And the reason for this is because the world is not going to change until you have a community thought. A thought of giving love to each other daily and not just those who are close by, but those that are far away as well. Like this, community gives love to one another. Do you see what I'm saying? You have yes. gained friends and love all over the world from one spot, but yet it must be bigger. There must yes. be, in your prayers and enlightenment and your meditations when you learn them, you must love the world, even the bad parts, because how is the world going to see the light unless there's light shed upon it. Yes. 
Yes. I get You're emotional both. talking about that. Namaste. I will use my mind, body, and spirit complex to help whatever, in whatever way I can. Yes. Thank you. That was their. That is their first message. There are many. But Blessing. for now, I am going to let you go. Namaste. 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 Thank you, Buddha. Much love Thank you to you. Much love to you that are gaining love every day. Use your love wisely. Hello. Hi, Jim. Welcome back. Hey, Jim. Hey, how are you doing? Welcome. No, there's... Whoa. Hi, Jim. Hello. Hello. I'm glad I have my water. Whew. Awesome. Back. <laughs> Jim, where, does, where, does, where are you Gordon, Gordon, thank you for that last question. Yeah. Jim, Jim yeah, Sabrina, that was very I... good. It was oh. awesome. It was yeah, so beautiful. Yes. Um, just about the I went almost totally the away that time. Yeah. yeah. Where do where does he, where does he, uh, what's where's your body in that sense? What are you kind of visualizing or experiencing? Um, I went almost with, with Buddha that time. I knew it was him coming in, but when he got in, I was almost totally gone. I was. Yeah. I almost totally blacked out. Yeah. See, I wish I could do a, a little more of that so that my mind can pull to the side and... I know. I, I almost... I could not... I was not even really with you at all uh, with him. I'll have yeah. to watch that and see what happened. Um, he was very strong. He was very strong. He pulled you totally away. Do we know what density he is now at this point? Uh, you'd have to ask him. I don't know. But yeah. I would think seventh. Wow. I, yeah. I would think. I'd think about so. so. Yeah. Was he? A, a, did he give you a lot of information? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it was very good, Jim. Oh, good. It Excellent. was profound in many ways. Oh. Yeah. It'll be a good idea if you go back and listen to that part. Yes. Yes. I, yes. I made notes, but it was profound. Yeah. Especially about meditation. I didn't realize. I also have that sort of meditation when I just. Uh, I I put the intention. Send the message and then I'm I'm out. Right. Oh, that's a, oh we talked about meditation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was part of it. But uh, Gordon, I liked your last question about um, a message from the Council of Creators, because that was such an awesome answer. So beautiful. Yeah. The, me the the message they had for us, and it's so true. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. they're, they're extremely, they're extremely wise. And Sabrina just kind of introduced me to them. I had always had um, a similar understanding uh, called the Logi, Logos, and, and in various senses, exactly. It's, it's all the same thing in the council. But um, the I've just been reading this book by Robert Shapiro that do all the details about the council. Of <laughs> and it's incredible, incredible. Some of just it, it goes into such vivid detail on exactly how they design new galaxies or um, how they design new, um, I guess it would be universes. They call them, um, oh, I'm blanking, but basically the the extent that they speak to about creation, just purely creation, mm. is remarkable down to the most minute detail you can think of. But, wow. um, I, I have to look them up because I've really never heard of them. Yeah, I, I'm pretty newer. Council of Creators. Council is it is it channeled by Robert Shapiro or something else? Yes. By Robert Shapiro, yes. Yes, okay. are my, the books I, I, I've read, many of them. I like. Is he them still around? Gordon. Yes. Yes. Gordon. Doesn't um, doesn't Robert Shapiro have a, a YouTube site? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He channels yes. the grandfather. Yeah. Yes, he wow. does now. Yes, there's a being he call he channels now called Grandfather. It's on the YouTube channel. Wow. Yeah. Brilliant. Hey, Brian, nice to see you, by the way. Yes. Oh, I love you guys. Hey, Namaste. Namaste. Hi, Brian. Hi, Sabrina. Much love to you guys. Hi, Brian. <laughs> I'm going to... Hey, Mike. Uh, Hi, Mike. 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 Hi,
There's somebody else that wants to come through. All right. Sure yeah, you. please mute yourself. Council of Creator. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm I, wrote, sure. I wrote it down. But somebody else is trying to get through, so I'll do that. I am Kenjin. Welcome, Kenjin. I would like to ask a question of you. I have been doing this with private sessions, but I would like to know, does anyone remember being in the colonies? I anyone? don't. No. I, I am Brian. I yeah. do hear one. You I have remember? memory in the dream time, uh, just a little bit visiting the ships coming from a, a port. I a little bit. It's almost. I don't know how to describe it. I was, I was lifted up through the roof, beamed up in a way. I felt yes. the beaming, pulling, yes. upward. Um, it was at night time. Yes. I went at night. Do um, you remember which colony you were in? One, two, or three? Not sure, but I do remember these these ports. These ports there. There's different types of ports. Did you? See um, I remember, like, there was someone, like, standing at attention, kind of like a yeah. general, or these yeah. beings. I couldn't tell, like, they had their arms behind their back, like, waiting. Like, someone was waiting. Did you speak to anyone? Um, that's the part I, that's when they cut out. I am uh, wondering if anyone remembers speaking to anyone, or... I am glad that you remembered being there. The ports are a very important memory. Thank you. Yes. But very few. I cannot even find the place in their memory where it is stored in some people. Yes, the only thing I, I remember um, seeing to occur. That's uh. the only thing I, I have a memory of. And then yeah. I walk. I woke up. She was in Colony 1, so you had to be in Colony 1. Uh, Kenjin, this is Safira. Hello. Hello. I haven't had the honor of speaking with you yet, so I'm very happy that you're here today. Thank you. I came to find out yes. what I need to know about these visitations to yes. the colonies, which no one seems to remember much. A few people seem to remember seeing me. I have no memory whatsoever. You were in Colony 3. Okay, I have been talking with you at night sometimes, having a, trying to converse with you yes. and, ask, and ask you for assistance with weight loss while I'm at the colonies <laughs> because I heard you can help people with that. There are those that were in Colony 2 that felt aching in their legs. How many uh -huh. of you felt aching in your legs? Me. I have. Uh, okay. I did it big time. Yes, you were heart. exercising in Colony 2. I remember dancing in the Blue Crystal City. Yes, that was a part of the exercise. <laughs> so what that is was it? last night. I, I re I'm Brian. I remember a ship honing in on me, like vectoring down on me, and then a pod came out and came down, and I could see through a little port like some beam was inside of it, like a scout ship or something. You remember more than most. Um, Kenjin, what was I doing in Colony 3? I'm sorry. You were also... Well, Colony 3 is the video colony. It is the colony where they are making videos to present to the Earth before first contact so that people are aware of what's happening and when. So you were actually being questioned, but not in an adverse way. 
Mm -hmm. okay. But you have much information that you are not aware of in your brain. You have several downloads that have not even been opened yet. Hello, okay. can, uh, can, how can I tell me which colony I've been to? I'm Gabriel. You were in colony two. And that's why I had my legs hurt. Yes. Because hey, look, it was, I, oh, it was really. for exercise and for communication. When we teach people, we have them exercise at the same time. It seems that the body takes in the information as well as the mind. And when you are listening to something while you are exercising, you retain it better. Yes, the cells, the cells are alive in but, the DNA. But I, Yes. I don't. I don't remember anything. But I've been, I've been were flying with... in my dreams. Yes, that is part of your memory. Yes, of the colonies. Yes, but I cannot stay. I have much work to do. I am just telling you that Colony Two was a learning and exercising experience. Dancing and different things were happening and also training for you that you may remember later. But we are trying to understand why you did not remember. I remember visiting my new hybrid daughter a few seconds ago. Okay. Yes. It's on us. It's on us. This is Sabrina. Do you have any clues? I, I feel inside it's at the rate in which we start to remember is how our physical form, our psyche, can handle it. Perhaps this is true. We will observe you more, and they will study that premise. Thank you. Uh, Much Kenzin, love. Kenzin, this is just Curly. I have a question. Uh, how do you do your... Hi, Kenjim. I'm so honored to speak with you yes. again. Um, how do you do your infusion? I forgot to ask you last time. You know your... Um, uh, Pleiadian infusion or Lyran infusion on us? We do that through many different ways, depending on the person's physiology. Some we inject it, which is the least popular, but okay. others we <laughs> it is given through and the what is it called? Digestive system. And some is even given under the fingernails and toenails and okay. in the corners of the eyes. Oh my god, so this is during the night, I, I suppose? Yes, you would feel nothing. Okay, wow, thank you. Kenji, Kenji, I have a question. Have you been holding auditions for Colony 1? Somebody delete Colony 1? Colony 1 is not deleted. Did you say deleted? No, lead. Oh. leading. Oh, leading Colony 1. Ten Takura is there. I had a dream that um, I was in a an audition place, and this guy in yes. a suit, he said, "You are here." I was like, "Why am I here?" And he said, "You are here because we, we want, we are auditioning people. You are being auditioned to um, lead the aliens in Colony One." And it didn't really make sense for me, so. They are looking for leaders. Yes, it would be more than Colony One. Colony One, to her is there. She may look like a man to you, but it is a woman. But um, she does have a manly voice. Can so you... perhaps you thought you talked to a man, but you talked to a woman. It was a human-looking being, though. And it was a guy. Uh, she, chan she changed her looks for you, then. In a, All right. in a black suit? <laughs> okay. Yes, perhaps. All right. I will ask her. She does do things like that. <laughs> Kenjin. Okay. Yes. Do you know the Kenjin species? No, I do not. What is that? I was told about them by uh, uh, my spirit guide, Candice. They are in the Orion belts, and it was another ah. incarnation I had, and I was curious if you ever encountered or know my relevance. I have not them. encountered them, no. I, have, okay. I am aware of Candice. Correct. And have I ever been to the, the colonies? <laughs> yes. That is why I am asking everyone, because the people that are closest to human colony have all been there, but no one seems to remember. Do we There's travel? 
there's more that I remember that's coming back. I just didn't know if you want the most recent, like the past week or so, but I have more memory of it, but it's coming forward. I see. Is there uh, can we invite city? humans? Uh, excuse me. Can we invite humans from the colonies to channel to us through you? They would have to come from Grukvikneer's colonies, because there is no humans in the colonies right now. I understand. Okay. Can she please pass we... our invitations to for them to channel through us? We will bring you back to the colonies when we find that things are working more properly. Obviously, something has happened. We are questioning. If your memories were deleted, some okay. of you. Uh. Uh, Ken Jin, sorry, uh, before you, you leave, when you are talking about your building three colonies for Hera, are we one of them? Because we are building one here with Max. Human colonies are here, yes. And human colonies are, are on the Earth or near the Earth, I should Okay. These are not the ones on other planets and spaceships, etc. These are the ones I have shadowed from Grukvik near, and perhaps they have stopped the memories. Yeah. I am going to ask them. This would be one of the proposals of someone. I read someone's thoughts, and they said that perhaps Grukvik near no. erased the memories. Okay, because here we are more and more organized with Max and he's doing a great job, I think, with great ideas. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going now. Thank you, Kenji. Namaste. Thank you, Kenji. Namaste. 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 <laughs> Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Hello again. Hello. Ah. My, Who name, are you? my name is James. I am from the Colony One. Welcome, James. Nice to speak to you again. How are you here today? Hello, James. Things are doing well. The Colony One is the telepathic colony. And I can tell you that there are now 17 telepaths there. Wonderful. Wow. And I am one of the leaders of the colony. Okay. They are looking for leaders for the colony because I cannot always be there. Nor can Scott, who is the second in command. We are not able to be there at all times. And the te telepathy we have shared with the aliens is quite incredible. We have learned much about what they are doing, how they feel, what they think, and so it has been a wonderful time for us. At times it's been very painful at the beginning because their thoughts come in so directly and they connect so directly with us that, and our minds are not as advanced as theirs. So it, at first it was painful, but now it is much more pleasant, should I say. Very well. Can you tell us in here in our human colony who is going to be telepath or yeah, who is beginning to be telepath telepathics? Many of you have started to become telepaths, and you know who you are, Sabrina mm -hmm. and Brian and Gordon and of course Nick and Gabriel and there are others. Gee. Many. I just named Safira, yes. And Curly, you yep. have also started. Caitlin, Thanks. yes. Many, many. I could go on. Mikey. Yes. How about Gabriel? I said Gabriel. Oh, okay. So, so tell us why... more about uh, how to become, how do you do practice here? What is the way for us to learn telepathy? The ways that we use on Grukvik near Colony 1 are not transferable to your Earth. 
we'd have a much better way of becoming telepaths on the colony because there's a there's some mechanical help as well. I'm not certain, not mechanical, technology, technology. Yes. help as well. And um, a small implant helps as well, which we cannot um, talk about really. Okay. But what, we do can do, what should we do here to become more telepathic? There's not much you can do on the earth to become more telepathic other than um, intentioned meditation toward it. But learn, um, learn that that's not always helpful either. The fourth dimensional energy that's been released is the most helpful thing for you. Uh, James, may I ask you? Oh, excuse yeah, that's me. the most important thing, yeah. Excuse me, hello. Yeah. Yes. This is Sakira. May Isaac. I ask you, hi, 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 James. May I ask you what your daily activities are uh, with everyone together there? We're actually helping them to um, make the interviews for Earth in Colony Three at times as well. We're also um, doing a lot of research on what people we believe should be coming here. Um, I'm in charge of seven different people on Earth that have the beginnings of t telepathy, and I have to check and make sure that um, they're still moving forward. And if they move forward a little bit longer, uh, for a slightly longer period, we may bring them to the colony to be um, fully telepathic. So when I was told I was on Colony 3 being questioned about... Earth, or I'm not sure, but yes. Colony 3 is different from Colony 3 that Ken Jean is running. Is that correct? Or it's the same? Yes. Actually, it's a shadow. They're shadow colonies, which means they're set up the same in, in many ways, but they're not the same. Uh, they're just shadows of, of, original, the of, original. of the original, yes. And there's they call them 1, 2, and 3, but these are the original 1, 2, and 3, up to 5. And they brought those there with permission and um, have brought people to them. But I believe there is some problem with the, um, the way that they are leaving because their, their thoughts are not going with them. Otherwise, they would remember things. How many of us are, are physically? I've met you all physically. Every one of the people that I see on this screen, I have met physically. Really? Oh. James. Because I was in Colony 1 when you all came. I was in the, the Shadow Colony 1. I is Yes. Is it James? James? Is that how you say your name? Yes. Yes. The... Um, for me, Brian... Um, I have the memories are coming back slowly of yes. the dream time, how I've been taken and beamed up, beamed up. Very good. And I felt that at nighttime. It was in that night. Yes. So it's very fascinating. Um, if your re memories re are totally restored, you may become a person of interest for the government. This is Not totally. <laughs> what was but that? I want it in a way that's safe for all. Yes, and you are fine. I don't. I don't want the men in black coming to visit me. I don't need that. No, you're not going to have that. But uh, not at this time, anyway. So, what advice could you give us in the human colony uh, down here, Hukala organization? How should we organize, and how can we help whatever you guys doing up there? Oh, I haven't given that much thought. But if you organize in such a way that we could talk to you. Um, that would probably be helpful. I mean, bring uh, one of the humans from this colony to your committees. That would be helpful. Can you explain a little more? Well, you... if if you br if you channel one of our people in your into your committees, yes, um, we could help you with understanding more of what's going on here and how to be more connected, perhaps. Excellent. That is the idea, and you're doing that right now, and yes. we'll expand on that. Excellent. Yes. Thank you. It's, it's a very welcome idea. 
Yes, so I would gladly help you if, uh, with permission, of course. Um, there are things that they we cannot share, but there are many times that there are many things we can help with in your enlightenment. Yes. So, James, I have another question. Many people who come back from the colonies, they don't say a single word about it. Are they afraid of men in black? Are they? Do you yes, know why? They it's are very hard for to. The ones that have been to the original Grookfic near colonies have much information, and if they would let anyone know that um, they had been there, they would be a person of interest, and they do not want this because many of them have families and loved ones that they do not want uh, to be exposed to this kind of activity. See no. the whole the whole thing, the whole thing with me, my friend, is just is is just bringing. The government knows so much already. The yes. men in black have ties to everything already. The, yes. the the way the structure of the system. So if everyone's everyone is gaining from each other, what is there truly to fear? If we're all sharing information, there are but things. Yes. There are things in the Grookfic near colonies that are beyond what you have been told. Okay. So they're I, beyond I, what you can understand. And only telepaths would be able to fully get the information, and they do have that. And they would be questioned, and it would be pulled out of them. And so, in this way, it would be harmful to them. I'm just, I'm just expressing ways that are safer for us as a community on Earth, the ground team. You know how we can share the information in a way that doesn't. There's one of you right there that has been to the colony or is listening right now that has been to the colony and come back and have not shared. So it's not someone that I see, but it's somebody that is listening. Much love to you, James, for, for building the dialogue with humanity. And with we the will try to do our best to move forward with you. Do, you. do you play games with the technology to learn telepathically? Yes, some of the children do, yes. There are certain telepathic games that the children play. But but um, you do not have those games on your Earth. They, are, they have a technology with them that opens up channels and other parts of the brain. And you can communicate with technology there. Yes. It's all technology telepathically there. Yes. James, uh, you're originally from Ontario, right? How did you know? Um, uh, you uh, channeled that information through Jim before. It's just uh, I'm from I'm from Ottawa, so hi. Ah, very I'm good. From Ontario yes. too. <laughs> and what was that? Caitlin is from Ontario. Ontario too. Very good. So um, I have a question. How I remember the dream or being in the audition room for um, being one of the leaders. How do you guys exactly? Um, audition us? There are many questions, but there are also many observances before you even get here. Uh, most humans that are being considered for anything in a colony, whether it be just a visitation or for leadership or for a telepath, were observed for a great deal of time beforehand. Okay, yes, <laughs> because I remember because I have telepathy every day, I just experience it with people, and it's. Yes. I, I thought it was really interesting having that dream because um, I seen many people in that room, and I didn't know I was there. And I believe what happened with you, Caitlin, is that um, you you uh, hallucinated what you thought you wanted to see as a person to talk to for your for that interview, and um, that was fine. In a I dream did? that you can do that, yes. You wanted somebody safe looking and professional and actually that's what you pictured, I believe. I did? Yeah. <laughs> wow, I would have been perfectly fine seeing somebody I oh. But you, for an interview you wanted to see someone professional. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um You're welcome. That's, thank you for even considering me for that because I'm I'm just a kid. I mean I was but really you, are, or you have had much more experience with alien uh, contact than 
99% of the Earth. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Oh, James, uh, this is Curly. Um, I wanted to know uh, what you have been, uh, what I've been considering for, because, uh, okay, this is another question. I thought I was in colony number two, but I don't remember if it's bro broadcast or colony number three. I don't know. The broadcast colony was number three. Okay. Number one is the telepaths and was more of a political setting. Oh. Number two was exercise, learning, and and things of that nature. Okay, so I'm still in colony number two? Am you were in colony number two, but that doesn't mean that's where you'll be next time. Okay. You may be somewhere else. Okay. Jane, may I ask here? a question? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Shabrina. Um, this is Sabrina. Um, is there anything we can do to practice uh, telepathy? Yes, that question was asked. Only meditation really helps you, if, but th the fourth dimensional energy that was released in your brain uh, is the most helpful thing that you have. Plus, if you are, uh, your, high, your vibration is going up, that also helps because it starts in the heart chakra and it goes by intentions. You will first understand intentions of others without even speaking to them. So that would be the first thing. And also the next thing that would start happening is that you would be drawn to those people like yourself. Actually that should happen right away as well. Drawn to people like yourself and be in situations like this. What kind of telepathic exercises can we do to each other to practice telepathy, one to one or one to many? Send love. Send love to each other. Because that is the that is a part of telepathy that is very rarely done. On on Earth, people send love to each other and connect hearts and, and beings together, and that is part of the beginning as well. And then whenever you can actually connect that heart chakra to somebody else, you'll be able to tell that. I have a couple of important questions uh, which I would like to ask. Um, one is uh, the politics. You now have a very unique outlook on the politics because you know how it works in outside the world. Yes. How you know, we're trying to figure out how to organize our community and also how to organize new communities on Earth suitable for ascension and for dimensional. So what telepathy, what kind of uh, communities should we expect for the future? How would it be organized? How to prevent the politics rotting in from the head? Well, it must be based on something factual, something integral, and something that can be uplifted like love. Although, I would prefer to see you start something like that with a group that is like-minded. Do you understand? We are the group which is like-minded, for sure. Yes, but you need to be like-minded in all ways, which means that you have to be on the same level of understanding for what you're proposing to do. And that way it will not disintegrate because one will not pull the group down. Ah. Now, let me explain something. There are four of you that are very like-minded. I don't know if you know who you are. But before you start any venture like this, you must have a discussion group about it. You must find the people that are on the same page and want to be on the same page. You cannot just bring however many people together and expect it to be okay. Do you understand? But we can afford multiple committees? You can afford multiple committees. Thank you. Different levels of committees. Okay. Some of it's weird, yeah. I, admit, I agree. Different vocational aspects of your lives. Some will be creators in the sense that they will build the ideas, build on the ideas. Some of you have very specific talents that can be used. Uh, if part of my question was, how it will look in the future Earth? Can you see the future communities on Earth? How would it, would I, they be different from what we have now? I am 
only aware of the future through the eyes of the aliens. And they do not let me see the future of the world. They are more building the future of the world in some ways, be keeping it alive. Oh, my question was not sneaking into, not clairvoyantly see, but how do you suggest we should do, I mean, from your perspective, because you have a new perspective of how alien worlds work, and so with that perspective, how would you suggest that humans on Earth would should change the politics? Well, it will be, it will be changed for them. Oh, that's a good answer, an important answer. Now, the money, how would the money in the future work? It will be changed for them as well. Politics and L has already outlined a plan on how to change and better your world. So we will use some sort of spiritual money? That is not to be discussed. Yes, that's a good answer. Thank you for explaining that. And the borders of the countries, would the borders stay the same or they will disappear altogether? They will disappear eventually, but not at first. That's a great explanation. Thank you. Uh, I, I invite further discussion. Thank you. I think this was very important for us to, to understand. I must go now, though. It is much, time for me. Much love to you, James. Thank you. Much love. Thank you. And come Namaste. come more frequently. Thank we you. want to have continue Bye, to continue James. the conversation. Goodbye to all of you. Bye, James. Thank you. Thank you for listening with sincerity. Goodbye, James. Good job. See you Goodbye. soon. See you soon. <laughs> You hope will, to see you, you will be invited back to the colonies. I hope this time you remember. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. ととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととととと
Holy Five or Hedy Five is the name of the planet. Okay. But it's something like this. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. That resonates with me, actually. Um, can, can you spell out the name of the planet? Because it's very important to understand who is who. Yeah, what's the name of the planet again? Dory 5. D O R R I 5. Dory 5. Yeah, please note in the notes, whoever makes the notes. That was oh. excellent speaking. Thank you. That was very good. <coughs> Very nice. Embarrassing. <laughs> no, not at all. I know. It's embarrassing for me to watch my videos. That's what is embarrassing. <laughs> it reminds me a little. It seemed very uh, similar to the samurai uh, Japanese in a sense. The way they they practice their their uh, their good. fighting. It's very similar uh, language and, and intensity to the words. Very good. That's exactly. Like, what it's like that. Like. Yeah. Yeah. You oh, can't be. Awesome. You can't be scared at all. Just let her go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just let her rip. Let it rip. So, so, Brian, can you speak a little? Uh, a little bit. Uh, like I said, I won't know what I'm saying. It's kind of funny. Okay. The Octurian, I think. But uh, <clears throat> I don't know. Here, just got to let go. Hold on. <sighs> it's more like a singing. That's how yeah. I, I perceive it. Octurian has a singing language, sort of, yes. You want me to star? Yeah, that would probably be best. Okay. 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 Sukoto mani shalayuka haskutu haskutu manana shukutu alakata shumanani ki yukutu kalakata numa shayuka sumpa lukutu yutu yatsi yukutu kuasaka takaska namo yayu shuyu watananaka shayato sukotanana sukuli yukutu palayana suwaya tukupu kuchi yaka tukonana sikia yaka so, so go. Oh, la la la, I could do la mano tori, la la lo tu si ano na, ano na li dia na mamo tu do li ko su di u a ya. Yes. Wa ta ya ta yu sakatu sana yu ko yishi ya skutu na na shu askulu mashi. Haskana you wani ashu. We o i o i o i o i o i o i o i o. Sala yo, skana you. Sala yo, skana you. Sala yo. La lula ia ula na na wali kati ya lulu. Skutu kwa la shana, skulu shataki. Ana yushi kali, askutu nishi. Ia iu la iu waha. Ia iu la la iu waha. あ、<音楽><音楽><音楽><音楽>
Tarasiti, Paratasha Shotakapata, take a horror. Ah, ask on the monocle, Hoshibua. Ask upon a mamma, yeah. As you go, but the catamona sick it here, you do, ya. Toga to do. Is a shopeta, papa city. Kirr. One on a crrr, go so cool, I don't know. Put it Congratulations, that was extraordinary. Oh, that is, you know, if you wanted to prove that it is real, that is one of the you know most yes. profound proofs that it is real. Oh my it's, God. Like a, it's a part of my imagination. It's like letting it get out of my fear, <clears throat> getting out of my way. Yeah, that's the point, yeah. It was a story that they tell their children. Yeah, but what were we speaking about? Was that what you were thinking about? Yeah. It was a story that they tell their children, and it was beautiful. I can't, I mean, I don't, I can't interpret it at all, but I got bits and pieces of it, so it was very yeah. nice. It was a story, though, and it was um, about what we would call maidens meeting um, a ferocious animal. It's sort of like one of our fairy tale kind of things, except that it's um, uh, much more bizarre, so... <laughs> <laughs> but it was nice. I mean, the ending was good. You saw her singing on Birdie on uh, yes. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad somebody knows what they're saying. Well, the ending was really cool because when Brian spoke the ending, it was that everyone understood and got along and was happiness. So. So it was good. I uh, not know, the word yeah. Adonai. Is Adonai the Arcturian word? It means let it be so? I don't know. Mm. I'm not sure of that one. I, I felt that at the end, something about letting go and just everyone get a unity. Yeah, something. with unity. is Exactly. Perfectly put. That was It was in all in unity. That's about all I got. Yeah. It was all it's in quite, unity at the end. That was it's it. quite impressive how, how you were communicating so seamlessly between each other. 
So I was, yeah, we knew what we were saying, so we knew what, I mean, we knew what we were saying to each other. I mean, I don't know what every word or anything, and neither do anybody else, but we knew what the phrases, where the phrases ended, so isn't that interesting? I it's, didn't know I didn't know what I was saying, but uh, I was thinking in English first, and then the words came. But it was a little about love, but I don't really know the sense. But it's maybe a beginning. I don't know. Yeah, it's more it feeling. Really in sync. It was very much in sync. So that was good. They gave <laughs> us a story, and one day they'll interpret it for us. It's a beautiful story, from what I understand. <laughs> I love it because it's it's very. Um, it's kind of emotional, but it's a feeling. You really do feel it. Yeah, it's a very it's emotional. Yeah. 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 I, I, I channel the Arcturian. Um, I, I don't know who it is. Twice, once with Brian. Um, actually, no, three times, with Brian, uh, with the friend of mine, and with um, a recording device. Yeah, a recording device. You said. And and with somebody else, uh, I don't know what his name is here. Uh, prana. Yeah, that was a prana. Yes. Yes, prana. Yeah. yeah. So. Anyway, um, it's it's beautiful to see that we have a beautiful community of people. I, I love it. It's. I, I just I have, feel so warm. I feel a lot of love coming from you guys, and, thank and it's you, just a wonderful thank thing. It's just but you, I, but I you know what happens out. to me? I want to give a shout out to Sabrina. Thank you for help opening me up a little bit more. Thank oh, you. Oh, yes. okay. work together. As well. Yes. Yeah, uh, my my voice becomes high pitch afterwards when I do it for a long time. It's like I have <laughs> helium. <laughs> as oh, as <laughs> as Brian. <laughs> I can attest to that definitely. It's it's a, it's like a, get one of those balloons and you blow them up and yeah, it, yeah, it's like in the healing. Yeah, it's quite. Um, <laughs> congratulations, Brian, on opening up, and congratulations. Uh, thank you, thank you, Charlie, on opening up. It is amazing what you did. Amazing. Thank you. Oh, uh, next time you want to speak, Brian. Next time you want to speak an alien language. Prohibit yourself speaking English. You don't. You don't I, have to comment yourself. Just do it. I know. It. I hold back a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and Sabrina, did you want to channel anyone? We have a few yeah. minutes. Um, we have about. I have about twenty minutes. Yeah, I don't. I don't have any time. They're waiting All for right. me. Yeah. Yeah, but I'll, I. But but I do want to say if if anyone feels like doing a language gym later on. Okay. Um. Maybe sometime. You know, after two thirty, three o'clock. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm available. Sure. I have a lot going on today. Tomorrow afternoon I'm free, but I'm, today is pretty busy. And today okay. at 8 p.m. we have uh, exactly. New York time. We have Zachariah. Oh, where that Zachariah? I forgot. He promised to be on a, on a computer, so he will have, he will have a, a technology which is should be more reliable than last time. Well, so do, so do we want to try and do it with Jim um, tomorrow? Yeah, sometime tomorrow. I have a. One channeling session tomorrow afternoon um, at 1 o'clock, so about 2.30 I'd be available. Okay. Sabrina? Right. Yes? Sabrina, can you also message me when that starts? Uh, I started getting some um, words from Lyrin. Okay. And yesterday I said to myself, I want to speak Arcturian, and then I started sort of prattling in that very high-pitched voice and... <laughs> Being very happy. I, I don't know if it was just more sounds than words, but yeah, it's sort of also letting go. The, the process of letting go is important. Mm -hmm. Just let her rip. Yes. yes. And, then, and, then, and anybody for Pleiadian too? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> the thing, the thing about Korean <laughs> is they have their intent at the beginning of the sentence, which happens to make the sentence brighter and more positive. So. Mm -hmm. um, when they when they do that, it's it just became a habit with them to do their uh, the intention in front or in the middle of the sentence. Some dialects of it have it in the middle, and but mm -hmm. it's like um, it makes the the sentence much more positive. It makes the dialect much more positive. So it's very okay. cool. Wow. Does that make yes. sense? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Um. So I will post that on the website. Okay. On tomorrow. 
At two thirty. At two thirty. Which whose time? Whose time? Two thirty. Eastern. Jim's time. Really? My time. <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> <I get confused. laughs> we always we we always go by that time unless otherwise noted. Okay. Very okay. good. Okay. Goodbye, Bye, everyone. everyone. Namaste. Namaste. Bye, Sabrina. Thanks for coming. Bye, Sabrina. Bye, Sabrina. Bye, Jaguar. Um, are you available tomorrow? Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. That sounds okay. good. So I'll okay. see you then. Bye. Okay. Bye, and, Bye, and Gordon, Gordon too. I know he's <laughs> somewhere in in he's there. He's probably watching. watching. Okay. Bye, bye, everyone. Bye, bye, Sabrina. Bye, bye Sabrina. Bye. Yeah, Gordon gave up his uh, his uh, spot so I could come in in the exchange. Yeah, oh, so thank you. Thanks to Gordon and thanks, thanks Jago, Gordon. for joining. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Can you put up a watch on the web website with have the New York Times so it would be easier for people seeing what time you go on? Uh, that would be for Slava. Slava, could you do that? That pre would be pretty easy, yes. Is Slava there? No, but he, he, he listens to that, yeah. Okay. Thank you, yeah. Slava, for all you do. Wonderful yes. job, wonderful job. All right, I guess we should wrap it up, be wrapping up unless we have something to announce. Yes. Brian? It's, okay. I'm, I'm going to be out there and have something. I, I just want to say thank you, both of you, so much for giving me the opportunity to come on. Thank you. Oh, oh. Yeah, wonderful. open it up wonderful. like a flower. You're always I loved you guys. Right. You're always thank welcome. You graduated the first level of uh, speaking <laughs> galactic languages. You are now qualified. Thank you. Uh, yes. What we have here is very. Thank you, Jaguar. I love you. Love yes, you. I, I want to say something. I want to respond to that, Brian. Brian, after an Arturian. Uh, it's <laughs> I'm a little embarrassed right now. That's okay. It's it's all good. Great, Brian, great. <laughs> no reasons to be embarrassed. Just no choose reason. whatever you prefer. Choose whatever you prefer. If you want to feel embarrassed, that's fine. You were I think there's no need. All of you. So I, I know I'm getting over it. Just letting go. Mm-hmm. Well, you can do it, Brian. I know. I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm you gonna, are doing well, it. I'd rather Max wind it up just for today. Thank you. <laughs> All right. You so thank uh, you, everyone. Thank you. A new person joined. Oh, yes. sure. Yeah, and disappeared. Oh, they left. <laughs> oh, bummer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You didn't need to say hi. Thanks, everybody. Uh, you know where to find us. Uh, we are starting new initiatives like um, organizing the organization. And I invite private sessions, which is live counseling. Jim, Nick, and Zakari in, invite uh, offer private uh, channeling sessions, come to humancolony.org, uh, donate, or uh, contact us for, for the sessions, and uh, become an active member. Be involved in what we are doing. And Jaguar, if you feel comfortable giving sessions, let us know when that happens, too. Yes, yes, uh, that will happen. I'm in, in preparation for that, yes. I feel, I feel you're getting close. Thank you. Yes, yes, I'm just trying to... Um, uh, let's say tune my own lifestyle a little bit more so I can get in the best space I can so I can serve people in the best way I, I can. So That's very wise and uh, I know that you're going to be a great channeler. Yes, thank you for your encouragement and your support. No problem. Yeah, thank you. We have a very unique community of people here and I think a lot of you are going to be channelers before the end of it. So. Hope so. Before the end of what? Of the world, yes. Yes, before the end yes. of whatever. So. <laughs> <laughs> Soon. Hey, Frantishek joined us. And we're wrapping up Frantishek. I'm sorry, but it seems the uh, session is, is going to end shortly. That but Mario. Uh, hey, nice hey, hey, Mario, join us on our next webinars. Mario, you unmuted yourself. Hey, Mario. Hi, Mario. So. All right. Goodbye. Much love to you. Let Goodbye. me give you. Will you give a blessing? Yes. Go I'll, ahead. I'll say a blessing for you as we leave. Okay. 
<sighs> Thank you, Most High energies and powers that be for all that you give us and all that you are. We know that this is a just an illusion at times, but we thank you for all the goodness that it comes from it, for the joy, the understanding that we're building between each other, and the understanding and communication that has to be. So much love forever and ever, and help us to ground so that we can be good workers. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Amen. I love you all. Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you. you.